preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. Good afternoon, children of God. It is indeed a pleasure to come back and uh, worship the one who created the heaven and the earth. May God's name alone be glorified. I thank you once again for uh, coming to this place and me a part of the camp meeting 2021 at Karen Community SDA Church. Um, I also bring greetings to you all from uh, Uganda and uh, for those who are watching online stay blessed and may the lord lead you to the understanding of truth and nothing but the truth shall we pray almighty god my father time has come once again that you must speak to your children use me as you had always used Speak the truth through me, Lord. And I'm just a human with a limited understanding and finite words that could be said. But may you speak and season every word that I speak, not what I think, not what I assume, but what you want us to understand. Speak directly to our hearts, Lord. And as we look into a very important theme of the scripture, may you send forth your Holy Spirit who inspired the, the written word of God that has been placed in our hands, that would edify us in truth, that would edify us in the doctrine, and also to reproof and correction in righteousness. Take all the glory, Lord, and give us your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. I have no idea what God had in his mind when he started creating this world. But for sure, as you flip open and then read the book of Genesis, you can really understand the bigger picture and perspective that God had in his mind as he began his creation right from day one. Each and every day as he progressed in the creation activity, there comes a day that is the sixth day and God said mm, it is time for me to make man and so in the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 he says and God said let us make man in our own image and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over the all air and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. That is how you and I were created in Adam. Now he begins his activity and he found that Adam was lonely. And he said... That it is not good for a man to be alone. And so he commanded deep sleep for Adam. And then he took a rib. God was not only a creator. He was a master surgeon. In fact he was a first surgeon. He did an open body surgery. In fact open heart surgery. Because to pull out a rib is not easy also. But he who created Adam out of dust. Look at his creative power. God Almighty, the one who can speak and his word is so powerful that things could be created just by the utterance of a word. What a powerful and awesome God we have. This God, he came down and he gathered dust 
And after he gathered dust, I don't know what he used, maybe water, and he made a beautiful doll, a clay doll. I'm sure most of you, when you in your childhood days, you must have definitely played with mud and sand and even clay. Imagine God had a childlike behavior and he started making a, a doll out of clay. And he looked around and he said, wow, this clay doll is so beautiful. It is amazing. What if this doll comes to life? And so he bends down and he breathes his breath into the nostrils of that clay doll. And lo and behold, that thing became a living soul. Title for today, Tree of Life. Tree of Life. When man became a living soul, and then after God created a helper and he called her Eve. Then after setting up in verse 9, chapter 2, Genesis. Book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 9. And it says, God called both of them, Adam and Eve. And he gave them some instructions. You can't come out with a product without a manual. God came out with products and he gave them an instruction manual. The instruction manual is just one verse. And the instruction manual reads like this. Book of Genesis chapter 2 and verse 9. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. And good for food. The tree of life. Also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He made all the trees, thousands and thousands and millions of trees. And in the Garden of Eden, there were trees. And among the trees was the tree of life. Verse 16. Now, after having put everything in place, Verse 16 is also the most important instruction in the instruction manual. It says, and the Lord God, what does your Bible say next? Repeat that. Commanded. When God speaks, every word that comes out of his mouth is what? A command. He is a creator. He is almighty. He is a redeemer. He knows everything and he can do everything. And whatever he speaks is not nonsense. But whatever he speaks, it is a command. God doesn't come around and cajole you, request you, pacify you. No, 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 no. When he says, thus saith the Lord. And he means what he speaks. And he knows the power of words that comes out of his mouth. It is we are human beings. We had not understood and understood the power of his word. But when God speaks, it is a word. And it is a very strong word. And it is a powerful word. And, though, and so he says in verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, what did he say? Of every tree of the garden. Thou mayest freely eat, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou shalt eat us thereof, ye shall surely die, saith the word. You know the rest of the story. He went. 
she entered into a conversation with the one who was chased and thrown out of heaven, who went inside the serpent and began to speak. Pen of inspiration says that serpent was like a beaten gold. So beautiful. Amazingly beautiful. So as she was admiring that beauty, the serpent began to speak and deceived her. What is meant by the word deception? Deception is to use truth and mingle it with a tinge of a lie. Even when you have a drum of milk and pour one drop of poison and tell everybody to drink, do you think you will drink? You will say, no, 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 it is just a drop of poison. And in front of a congregation, you just pour one drop of poison in a drum of milk. And tell them, look, I poured only one drop. Please come and take. That is deception. You have a whole drum of truth. Just one drop of lie is enough to floor you down. I always mention this and I want to mention this again here. Lucifer is so cunning. He is so wise to flood you and me with the truth. To make you to float on one lie. Let me repeat it. The devil, the Lucifer, Satan, this old serpent, this being is so wise. It is so cunning. It is so smart that he can flood you and me with what? Truth. To make you and me to float on one lie. tree of life so God the creator got fed up with Adam and Eve and he began to curse both of them including the serpent verse 16 chapter 3 Genesis unto the woman he said I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And he turned to the man and he said, and to Adam he said, next verse 17. Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I, what? Commanded thee, saying thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. That is the reason why the man of the house cannot stay back home and see that he could run the family. It is only in his sweat the family eats. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread. 19th verse. It is a very saddening story. Let's look at that. Did God request Adam and Eve? What was it? Command. So, whatever God says, Whatever instructions that he puts in the manual is nothing but what? Command. It is as simple as that. Have you understood? Perfect. Let's go and read the chapter 3 and verse 11. And I'll begin from there. And he said, you see, after they sinned, Adam and Eve went and hid God comes in the cool of the evening. And in verse 10 he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, God told him, who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded? So repeatedly when God says something. It is nothing but a command. 
when the president of a country speaks whatever instructions he gives it becomes a what a directive a directive is a law am i right there is no say against it but here is a creator with awesome power and might and glory and when he speaks to the dot to the word verbatim we must hold on to it it is nothing but obedience nothing but obedience sheer obedience now when god created adam and eve did he create them as mortal beings or immortal beings is it a hard question when god created adam and eve did he create them as mortal beings or immortal beings are we sure okay but let's see what the bible says i also thought the same thing when god created adam and eve they had the natural propensity to die are we together however among the trees the purpose that he planted the tree of life is for them to go and partake of that fruit on a regular basis such that they extend their lifetime it's the perpetuity of life you might wonder uh huh uh uh where did you get this one <laughs> from kindergarten this is not what we have learned but that's what the bible says let's look at chapter 3 genesis and verse 22 that's where i get this from This came right from the mouth of the Lord and he says and the Lord God said behold the man has become as one of us after eating the tree of the knowledge of good and evil never miss another sermon i don't know when but i could just come and speak about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil it's called the forbidden tree that is the title don't miss that it is a very deep doctrinal theology come don't miss bring somebody and inspire somebody to come online also to to l- listen to that message now let my the, my question is here and the lord god said behold the man is become as one of us to know good and evil and now what did he say lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and what does your bible say and eat and live forever what does that mean think with me come let us reason together say the scriptures so in that case if god had not taken the tree of life out of the garden of eden assume that the adam and eve had understood and they had gone to the tree of life and they had taken the fruit what would have happened thank you now answer my question did god create adam and eve as mortal beings or immortal beings thank you very much they had the propensity to die that is the reason why that the the only clause the only word that only demarcation that differentiated the immortality and mortality is nothing but obedience if you have understood that say amen the only demarcation that separates you and me as mortal beings from immortality is what obedience because it is because of disobedience adam and eve had to be chased out of the garden of eden they were forbidden from eating the tree of life what became the forbidden tree has now shifted goal post and what became the forbidden tree now tree of life If you have understood that say amen. amen 
Let's pray. Father, give us clear thought. Sometimes we come with our own understanding. But as we read the scriptures, may the Holy Spirit teach us with clear words. Help me with the right word which is plain spoken, easy to understand. Because this is what is going to save us. Take all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. So, obedience is the essence. When God speaks, it is a command. When God commands you and me, nothing but obedience is what is expected from you and me, from all of us. If you obey, if I obey, immortality. If I disobey, mortality will take over my soul. Are we together? Read with me book of First John. It's a very famous word. Somebody can stand up and read it for me. First John 3, 4. What does it say? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, it says... Slowly, everyone who sinneth breaketh the, the law. Uh -huh. In fact, In fact sin, is sin is lawlessness. King James Version puts like this. Transgression of the law is sin. Repeat with me. Mm -mm. <laughs> You're murmuring. Transgression of what? The law. Replace the law with something else. Come on. Let's use the word command there. Transgression of the Lord's command is what? Sin. Let's replace another one. Transgression of the word of God is what? Mm -hmm. So man lost his eternity because of disobedience. And this thing went on and on and on and on until Malachi and then Matthew begins. In the first chapter of Matthew, we see the herald and the birth of the Savior, Jesus Christ. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, the tree of life in the Garden of Eden was taken by God to heaven. Are we together? Now, somehow, how can the plan of salvation be realized? Jesus Christ, the Son of God, must come. So when Jesus Christ comes, John 3.16 says, Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. So what was done in Garden of Eden will be undone in believing in Christ. Because the verse is very clear and it says, Whosoever, it doesn't mean that it is only the Adventists, it doesn't mean who are only the Baptist members, it doesn't mean only that, whoever believes in Christ, believing is not knowing Christ, that is where we go wrong. Many times we know, I know Christ. I know Christ. Yes, even me, I know uh, uh, your excellency, uh, Kenyatta. I know him. But the question is, does he know you? No. I know Barack Obama. Does he know you? Knowing Christ will not save you and me. Knowing the scriptures will not save you and me. Knowing and understanding the prophecies will not take an inch above the ground towards heaven. 
reciting memory verses will not take an inch above the ground to heaven why because let me tell you and ask a question who knows the scripture cover to cover next to god satan does it qualify him to go to heaven so why do you go around and boast to saying that i can cram the bible i know prophecies i know the spirit of prophecy it is not going to take you even one inch above the ground let me tell you in the presence of the lord knowing doesn't matter believing in jesus means a lot of difference believing in christ is to obey every word that came out of the mouth of god thus said the lord i know the commandments that doesn't qualify me for heaven the question is do you follow do you keep the law do you follow what god had said that is the reason why god said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of god as long as every word that came out of the mouth and we follow it and we meticulously abide by it that is when eternal life is in heaven for us <clears throat> question is how do we get eternal life john 3:16 is one answer <clears throat> there is also an interesting character who came and met jesus christ in the book of uh, matthew let's go and read that this guy came in came to jesus and asked him master what do i do to inherit eternal life i think it's found in book of matthew chapter 19 let's read uh, verse 6 book of 19 Matthew <clears throat> chapter 19 and verse 6 it says wherefore there are no more twain but one sorry it's uh, there was a guy who came and he asked master what do i do to inherit eternal life what was christ's response to that what was his response go keep the commandments what was the man's response very interesting well, how did he respond to jesus christ huh please answer me he came to jesus christ and he said master what should i do to inherit eternal life and he jesus christ turns to him and he said why callest thou me the good master because there is none good than thee the lord god go keep the commandments and he shall it have eternal life now the question is What did the man respond to back to Jesus? This is what I have been keeping right from my childhood days. Question again, was he telling the truth or a lie? He was telling the truth. He was telling the truth. Yes, it is true now. Am I contradicting in what I'm speaking to this this afternoon? One side I'm saying keep the law. do whatever god has commanded now i'm saying my, my, we are putting another argument this guy was keeping the commandments but the question is did he keep the commandments yes the moment he told jesus look i've been keeping these commands right from my childhood days what was jesus christ's response go sell your property that could have been done but what pained him most was the next statement <laughs> go go sell your property and give poor and follow me he could have done some of those ones but the bible says the man left the place sorrowful what does that mean so what is the use of keeping the law interesting question not so but the bible says to have eternal life is to keep the law but now we are now finding it very difficult because god says now this fellow is is, is tightening everything let's read romans chapter 7 book of romans chapter 7 and verse 7 it says 
What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. No, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. Verse 8. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, listen to that, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. What does that mean? Book of Romans says, and it begins with a question, chapter 7 and verse 7. Is the law sin? Nay, God forbid. Law is the knowledge of what? Sin. If the law had not told me that it is, it is sin to lust, and it is, it is wrong, and it is sin to covet, I wouldn't know. Question. Did Jesus, did God tell Adam and Eve what they must do before? Did he say that? Did he give them instructions before? He did. Did he also tell them what would be the repercussions if they don't follow what he had commanded them? He did. So the law is only pointing that it is wrong or right. You ask a very good Adventist. You call him. It could be a pastor. It could be an, a leader. You ask him. Ah, oh, elder, you are married. Yes, I am. And we understand that you are faithful to your wife. Yeah, yes, I am. Why? Why are you faithful? And if the elder says, because the Bible says so, it is dangerous. Pastor, if you ever tell, for me, I'm a pastor and I want to be faithful to my wife because the Bible says so. Or if you tell, because I want to go to heaven, you are in real danger. That is precisely what Christ is pointing to. Being faithful should not be a compulsion. Are we, are we there? It is automatic. If you had told, yes, I love my wife, I saw, I am faithful. Ah, there you are. That is where you have kept the law. If you have understood that, say amen. I don't know if some of you are still confused as to what is happening here. Let me put it in another way. The Jews thought to violate a commandment that they'll have to physically commit certain acts. So a Jew thought in his mind, oh, my commandment says that I should not commit adultery. So that he thought it is only when he commits that physical act that he has violated the command. Now Jesus Christ comes. The one who gave the law to Moses in Mount Sinai. The one who wrote the law with his own fingers. He comes and expounds the law. The one he, he, the, the, he authored and he tells them, look, fellows, you are so filthy. You're whitewashed to tombs. You're wipers because you think that you'll have to commit that physical act in order to violate the commandment. Yet I'm telling you, I am the author of the law. Let me tell you another version of that law. If any man thinks oh, lustfully about a woman in his mind, there he commits what? Adultery. So keeping the law is from where? You don't have to take a dagger and then kill your brother and say, I've committed murder or committed, the, uh, I mean, I've, thou shalt, I've violated the commandment of thou shalt kill. God said, the moment you think ill about your brother, you have committed murder already. The law and the commandment, they are the same. 
Many Christians, they just violate or misinterpret and mis distort that message and they say, law is different, commandments are different. Yet the law and commandments, they are the same. They say, oh, the laws, they were nailed on the cross. Commandments, it's okay, it was only for the Jews. Exodus chapter 16 and verse 28. Book of Exodus, chapter 16, and verse 28. Somebody read it. Exodus, chapter 16, verse 28. It says, <clears throat> And the Lord said unto Moses, How long refuse ye to keep my commandments and what? My laws. You can see these two appearing together always. Let's read the uh, same book, Exodus chapter 24 and verse 12. 24 and verse 12. My book says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me unto the mount, and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone, and the law and the commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them what is he referring to the commandments are the laws and the laws are the commandments you can't separate it let's go to deuteronomy chapter 4 book of deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 13 he declared unto you his covenant which he commanded you to perform even ten commandments and he wrote them upon two tablets of stone. Now it is also referred to as a covenant. Let's read another verse. The same book, Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 33. It, it says, Oh, did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire as thou hast heard and live? We can read also the pre previous verse and it says the commandment and the laws, they are the same. Let's go to chapter 33, Deuteronomy and verse 2. Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 2, it says, My doctrine shall drop as rain. My speech shall distill as the, as the dew, as a small rain upon the tender herb, as the showers upon the grass. God has always intertwined all these things into his laws and commandments. And thus said the Lord. As we saw before, now what are we going to do? We are human beings. We are now living during the last days. What should we do to have eternal life? How can we partake of that tree of life that was put in the garden of Eden as was in the old days? Let's go to John chapter 14 and verse 15. Book of John. Let's see what Jesus Christ says. Book of John chapter 14 and verse 15. And it says, If ye love me, keep my commandments. Verse, I mean, uh, book of John, chapter 15. Let's read the verse 4. Let's read from verse 1. Jesus Christ says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. What does that imply? What does he say in verse 1? Think with me. I am the true wine. Okay, accepted. What was the next statement? I am the true wine and my father is the husbandman. Okay, that is also accepted. Verse 2. Uh-huh. He says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit. What does that mean? You can still be a Christian. You can still kneel and pray. 
you can still read the word of god you can still pay tithe you can still sing special songs you can still be in the prayer group you can still be in whatever and still not bear what fruit now it was jesus christ who says that if you even you can abide in me but if you don't bear fruit listen to what he says he taketh away who the husband man and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth that it may bring forth more fruit come down to verse 4 abide in me and i in you as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me see how many times is he mentioning the term abide in me in me abide in me i am the vine and ye are the branches he that abideth in me verse 5 and i in him the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me he can do nothing if a man abide not in me he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gathered of them and cast them into the fire and they are burned and if ye abide in me and my words abide in you aha uh-huh. he shall ask what evil and it shall be done unto you verse 10 if you keep my commandments he shall abide in my love he has summarized it verse 10 jesus nails it and he says aha uh-huh, i've been lecturing you fellows finally let me tell you what is meant by abiding in me you can still be in the church You can still kneel down and pray. You can still read your word, the word of God. You can still master the art of prophecies and whatsoever. But if you don't keep the commandments, Jesus Christ here declares that you had not been abiding in Him, and that the husband man will come and pluck you out. He portrays himself as a wife. now who is the tree of life hmm it is jesus christ now jesus christ is the tree of life no wonder he was dragged by the streets of jerusalem and he was given a tree and he was nailed on that tree and he was put among the thieves and there itself judgment is declared one side people who accept him believe in him the other side those who don't believe in him and he turned to the one i don't know which side but he turned to the one who said master remember me in your kingdom because he believed in christ who was hanged who was nailed on a tree that was the tree of life for us today if you and i come to the calvary cross that tree which is a source of life now and come and fall on our knees and tell him lord i surrender i surrender everything and have bundled as a baggage let me leave it at your feet and you go in peace and this must be a repetition that is a sanctification of life unless and until we come to him and partake of the fruit on a daily basis perpetuity of life will come to its cessation that's the reason why david said let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight all I want you to read the book of Galatians chapter 5. Let's see what would be the result of abiding in Christ. He told very clearly, if you abide in me and if you don't bear fruit, the husbandman will come and pluck you out. He also said abiding in me is nothing but to keep the commandments. Let us see what would be the result of we abiding in Christ by following his commandments to the dot and let us see what the scripture says. When you and I abide in him. Book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit is what? 
love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance. Again, such there is no law, period. How does it come? Against such there is no, no law. So the fruit of the Spirit, you and I can bear fruit only when we abide in God Jesus Christ. Only when we follow the words that he has spelled out. Only when we keep the commandments. That is the reason why in the book of Revelation chapter 22, my dear sister read that beautiful verse as the scripture reading. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14, it says, when we continue to abide in Christ and remain faithful by keeping God's commandments, finally we can claim this experience that we read in the book of Revelation chapter 22 verse 14. And it says, blessed are they that do his what? Commandments. That is precisely what is expected of you and me to abide in Christ is to follow what he had told in the commandments. It is only to bear the fruit. You and I cannot bear the fruit unless we keep the law and the commandments. And so when we continue in that, abiding in Christ, now in that experience will take us to the next level whereby you and I can partake of the same tree of life that God took in the book of Genesis. And the Bible says, blessed are they that do his commandments. That they may have right. What does that say? That they may have access. That they can. No, no. It says they have what? The right. Adam and Eve, they lost the right to access to what? The tree of life. Now the same access, the rights will be given to us. To access the tree of life. And may enter in through the gates into the city. Finally. You may be a Christian. You've been in some church. We don't care. You may be a Catholic. You may be an Anglican. You may be a born again. You may be Pentecostal. You may be miracle workers. Whatever you call it. The Bible says, if you don't keep the commandments to the dot, you will lose the right to the tree of life. Knowing Christ doesn't matter. What do I mean? Let me put it this way. You might say, oh, I am a baptized Christian. Fine. We respect it. We appreciate that. But into how many commandments were you baptized? Were you baptized into all the commandments? Ten? Or were you baptized into nine? Why am I saying that? God gave all the trees. All the trees in the Garden of Eden. But one tree He told them, one specific tree don't touch. Now, question. Did he permit them to use all the trees? Huh? Yes, except one. It is the same God who created everything that you see and don't see in six days. And my Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 2 and verse 1, it says, on the seventh day, he sanctified one day. He, he hallowed one day. He blessed one day. And he gave it as a gift to humanity for you and me to keep it holy just as a seal of true worshippers. Now, 
what God chose. I have too many questions to ask. Who chose the day? Adam and Eve? No. It was God himself. Who chose the tree? God himself. What did Adam and Eve do? They said, ah, we don't care. We will go and just violate it. Precisely that is what is happening in today's Christian dome. They say any day is okay. Every day is God's day. No! When God chose a day himself and he hallowed it and he sanctified it and he blessed it and he gave it to us. That is the day of her Sabbath rest. Not Sunday. Keeping Sunday is for the Hindus. Not for Christians. Because if there is anybody who can prove from the Bible that the Sabbath was changed from Saturday, the seventh day. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, and verse 13 says, Come, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What does it say? Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. This is nothing but the first angel's message. Go with the everlasting gospel and stand for Christ and live for Christ and bring someone for Christ. May God bless you.
discovered knowing you doesn't matter because even the devils do tremble in your presence. Loving Father, there are many other pagans who know you, but they don't follow your commandments. How better are we today knowing you and not following your commandments? We have always consec desecrated what you have consecrated. Two things you declared holy in the Garden of Eden. One was the Holy Sabbath. We have really desecrated that holiness. That holy observance of Sabbath has gone by the days. Dear Lord, teach us how to keep the Sabbath holy. The second one that you declared holy in the Garden of Eden was the marriage. And when we look around the way in which marriages are being desecrated, men and women, they indulge in desecrating one another in their passions and worldly lusts. I only pray, dear Lord, and commit each one of us that you forgive our sins. For the fact that we have breath in our nostrils, we have hope that still there is a chance for us. But before it is too late, may the words that we have listened to, may it work in our hearts and transform us and revive us such that we will purpose in our heart to keep your commandments. We are too selective in following your commandments. And we always neglect most of them, yet the book of James says, if we offend even one, we have lost all the commandments. We have violated all the commandments. May that be a perpetual reminder in our heart. And let us not keep the law just for the sake of it, because that doesn't matter as you are pronounced. May we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Help us to build that relationship. And to build that relationship is possible only when we read the word of God and understand and purpose every day in our heart that we should carry the cross and follow you. Unless we lose a self and die to ourself, we cannot do that, Lord. Love during the last days as you pronounce has waxed cold. There is coldness all around. Love for one another, respect for one another has gone out of your presence. We can see people waging war with one another. 
Even your, our own brothers and sisters, they have dragged each other to court. Dear Lord, forgive us. Bind us together with your love, Lord. Bind us together with your love. Forgive us if you had gone wrong. But teach us your ways. All for your glory. For I pray in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.